When you look at a topographic map, probably the first thing you notice are all the lines. The lines on a topographic map show us the shape of the land or the topography. We can tell where the landforms are, where rivers are, streams are, where it's steep, where the land is flat. And when you look at these two pictures right here, you might not be able to tell what they are, but hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll be able to recognize what certain features are on a topographic map. The picture on the right is a little bit easier to tell because they've shaded in. What you are looking at, you're looking down on a hill or a mountain. And you see where the lines are close together is where the elevation changes the fastest, so that um, shows us where the mountain is steep. All right, so a topographic map shows us a three-dimensional landform on a flat piece of paper. And they do that using the contour lines. Now, a contour line is an ISO line, which means that every point along the line is an equal value. So contour lines show us areas of equal elevation. So every point along this line has an elevation of 700. Now, most likely that's in meters. Um, and the, the number that they give us, like the 700 meters or 800 meters, that is the distance above or below sea level. Now, different maps are going to have different contour intervals. The interval is simply the difference in elevation between the lines. So looking at this one right here, if our first contour line is 100 and our second is 200, then our contour interval is 100. Now, if we go back up here and look at this first one, this is 700. Our next one in bold is 800. So our contour interval between each of these lines in between is going to be um, probably 20. So this will be 700, 720, 740, 760, 780, and 800. So you have to look at the lines that are labeled to figure out what the other lines are to then determine your contour interval. All right, so as I said on the first slide, if you have concentric circles, that represents a hill or a mountain. It can also represent a depression, which means instead of going uphill towards the center, you're going downhill towards the center. And when that happens, you're going to have hachures. Hachures are these little hash marks that are drawn. Most likely what's in this map is a volcano with a crater at the top. If there were hachures at the top of this mountain, same thing, that would be a crater. There aren't, so what that tells us about the top of this landform is that it's flat. If it's a steep slope, uh, the lines are going to be closer together because your elevation is changing faster, and a more gentle slope has those lines further apart. Streams and rivers are shown with a V across the contour line, as you see here. The point of the V points uphill, so this stream is flowing in a southeast direction. I'm sorry, a southwest direction. All right, so here's another topographic map um, and some of the features that we just talked about. Here I've got Sugarloaf Mountain. And a lot of times your mountains will have the elevation written at the top. If it did not, you could just um, count your contour lines to figure out what that would be. Here we have a stream. The V's are pointing towards this direction, so our river is flowing towards the northeast. Maps generally are going to have a scale as well uh, to help you determine what um, the measurement would be um, or what each inch or certain measurement exists in real life. Okay, so here's a, um, a profile of a mountain. Profile would be the side view. Um, and you can see if we look at the topographic view, where the lines are further apart, we have a more gentle slope. Where the lines are closer together, we have a more steep slope. Okay, here's a couple other examples of what these landforms would look like. So looking down, you've got your concentric circles. That's going to be your mountain. And this one, you can see where there's kind of a bend in the line is the ridge. Here we have a depression, which is basically like a crater. And you can see we've got the hachures or the hash marks that indicate that you're decreasing in elevation instead of increasing towards the center. And then here, once again, I have a stream. This one is flowing to the south because the V's are pointing to the north. And this is what that would look like. I have a stream 
cut down into the landform. Okay, looking at this diagram, this is a simplified um, topographic map. Our contour interval is 10 meters, and most of the time they're going to tell you at the bottom of the map what the contour interval is. So if this line represents an elevation of 100 meters, this would be 200, 300, 400, and 500. So point A, where this hill right here, has an elevation of 500. Now if I want to know point E, which is in a depression, okay, so I know that, that this line is 100, this is 200, this is going to be 300, but then it's going to decrease as I go towards the center. So I have 300, 200, 100. Okay, notice F and D are not on a contour line. If this is 150 and this is 140, D falls somewhere in between. So you would estimate that would be about 145. F would be about 165. We do the same thing with C over here. It's probably about 155. B is 140. Um, Ert River, if you look at that, is flowing in a south direction because the V's, once again, always point upstream. Now, in class, we're going to look at a topographic map that includes Millbrook High School, and you'll be able to see what the elevation of the surrounding land is and maybe even find your own house and take a look at that.